Now, you're coming up to your 20th anniversary at Big Finish and playing Brax. So how, how was it that you came to, to work for Big Finish? Um, weird enough, it, it um, all stems from working for um, real-time pictures, um, Keith Barnfather, who you might have come across his work. He does Doctor Who spin-offs in, in uh, video dramas. And um, during that kind of fallow period when Doctor Who was off the air, it was people like Keith and Big Finish who were keeping the interest up. And I think it's because I'd done a, a, a piece for him that my name was sort of out there in the kind of Doctor Who firmament. Was it Demos and Rising? I was asked, Demos Rising? Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, the Demos Rising was the first one. Um, and I think it was because of that that uh, they, they, they got me in to do, first of all, I, I was in a, a Doctor Who one, playing, of all things, Charles Darwin. Doctor Who, Blood Tide. There's something in here. Some sort of lizard, I think. Release, I saw them. The Bible tells us that this world of ours is a mere 6,000 years old. By the lake, El Hugo. That the Lord created in six days that there was but one flood. Devils! With three eyes I saw them! It's about the size and proportions of a man. Two arms, two legs. They are here! So to my mind, these fossils should not exist. And now they have come back? Yes. Yes, they have come back. <laughs> And they liked what I did, and and I liked doing it because the great advantage of doing audio drama is you don't have to learn the lines, you don't have to put on any makeup, you don't have to put any costume on. You can arrive in your civvies, you can get in the booth, you can read the part, and you can go home, and you get a lovely, lovely, lovely lunch cooked by Toby, the sound technician. I'm sure you've all heard about the lovely lunches. Everyone talks about the lunches. Yeah, they're fabulous. <laughs> yeah, it's <coughs> um, yeah. So that's how it happened. And then, of course, they cast me as Irving. And what was interesting is because I knew nothing about this other world of Doctor Who. Um, I must confess, I'm not really a huge science fiction fan. I, I, I know I'm a, I'm a big fan of drama, but I'm not necessarily a, a sci-fi fan. <clears throat> but what I, I discovered quite early on is that with science fiction, everything is possible. Absolutely everything is possible. Um, and so as we went through uh, being Irving, I suddenly discovered, oh, oh, I'm a Time Lord. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm Doctor Who's brother. But no one ever told me that. So all, every time I did one, I, I suddenly learned something new about Irving. And then, of course, it, it all went very bizarre. And it was like three Irvings going around the universe doing different things. He got quite malevolent at times. And it all became very bizarre. And I'm sure you have you had the latest um, Gallifrey uh, we just, release. Yeah, we both finished it in the last couple of days. To... Yeah, well, as you probably know, I, I don't want to put any spoilers out there, but you know, it's not the first time that something drastic has happened to Brax. Um, but you know, I mean, I've been killed off about four times, I think, but I've always come back um, in some guise or another because, of course, there's so many of me out there <laughs> doing yeah. different things in parallel universes. And, so it doesn't. Uh, I'm, I never. I never feel overly concerned when they they they, they destroy me somewhere or another. I, I was actually going to ask you because Brex has one of the most complicated timelines I think of any character. Because as you say, he's constantly in communication with his past selves, future selves. There's different timeline ones that come in, um, and I, I actually read an article just to try and get my head around everything. I, and it was it was bigger than I had actually remembered. Um, how, how much of that did you feel you needed to know or you just got the lines of the script and you just go with what's on the page? Um, it would be disingenuous of me to say that I just learn the lines or I would just read the lines out and don't worry about the plot because that's not true because you've got to understand everything. Um, I have to confess that sometimes I get scripts and I go, I really don't know what on earth is going on. But it, when you get to those situations, you just have to find the reality of what you're saying. Um, and once you've you know, it might not make sense 
but you've got to try and make it make sense to the, the listening audience. So you've got to try and convey what it should mean to an audience. And what's confusing about Brax is that it's not confusing. Is that he, he is? You're right. He is very, very different. I mean, he's not the same person all the time. He can be very, very different people. So the Brax from Gallifrey is a much serious of Brax than the Brax from Bernice. Uh, the, back, the Brax from Bernice did at one point become quite malevolent and evil. But then, you know, we discussed it and uh, they decided to pare back this huge, it become far too large, the Bernice stories. It become, there was too many characters. So they trimmed them all back and just left the basic ones, the ones they wanted to keep. One of whom I'm glad to say was Brax. And it became the Brax that we now have <clears throat> with Bernice Summerfield, who's much kinder, softer, smoother, fluffier, funnier, which is the Brax that I like uh, out of all of them. Um, and it, yeah, so that's the growth period. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, I did speak to Scott. Scott has now finished um, producing the Gala phrase. Um, and Scott's a, a good egg. And he said, Oh, I wouldn't worry, Miles. You know, Brax will never disappear. He'll always come back somewhere at some point, sometime. So I'm waiting for the call. But I do know because of, I don't, you're probably aware that they've become extraordinarily popular, the big Finnish audio dramas. And so actually the people are falling over themselves to do them now, which they, which is very nice. But it also means they have a huge backlog of stuff they have to do and i had actually a, a very good script um that a friend of mine had written which actually got produced by the bbc on radio but i bit, i put it forward to big finish for the third consideration they said um miles we, we've got so much stuff we just haven't got room for this i'm so sorry so you know they are they are victims of their own success in many ways uh in terms of um the acting style in uh studio as opposed to on the stage um, I, I did hear on the extras that you're a very physical actor, even within the sound booth. So yeah. how important how important is that uh, in in terms of getting your your part across? Well, I, I I always work standing up because you can. I think you can hear when people are sitting down. Even when I'm supposed to be sitting down, <laughs> I'm standing up because you just have to free up. You know your your energy. I mean, I remember going. This is really weird. I'm a bit on a tangent, but I went to see an opera. Don Giovanni uh, before it all everything shut down and there was one point when the actor the, the, sorry I should, I should say the singer playing Don Giovanni was rolling around on the floor but singing at the same time and I thought my god that is so extraordinary that he can actually roll around on the floor and still produce this extraordinary sound and of course I just suddenly thought well yeah that's the power of your diaphragm and your and, and your, your rib control and I figured you know that's that's exactly sort of what I do that when I'm in the booth I am giving it the power and energy that that voice needs at, if they, in that situation and um if you, you can't do that sitting down and yeah at some time it can be very exhausting even though you're standing up in a booth you're not even running around or but you know it, it requires that level of effort otherwise again you're not you're not um, portraying the the drama of the situation in terms of um uh the the past year in particular but there has for some time been periods where scheduling has dictated that you do your parts all separately um was that happening happening more recently um as opposed to, to the past and what do you prefer you you might find this um hard to believe um but there are a couple of episodes of uh, both Bernice and Gallifrey where it was entirely done with just me and Scott Hancock reading all the other parts. And that's purely down to scheduling. Um, there was one occasion where I, my car broke down. I was on tour. I was doing a play. My car broke down. I couldn't get to the studio. So he arranged for me to meet up with Scott in another studio. And I played the entire thing with him. And that has happened a couple of times. And that happens actually more often than you know and i would um i would dispute that any audience member who could tell me which one of those episodes i was just me and scott rather than me with the other actors um in terms of what i prefer well scott actually said he preferred it when it's just me and him because it gets done a lot quicker 
because there's not all the kind of joyous gossip that goes on because what you probably get from the extras is you get you know the fact that we're all constantly having chats all the way through the recording process because we all have a good laugh we all chat away we all gossip like crazy we all catch up with each other um i was intrigued and to hear on the, the extras for uh, the last gallifrey that scott not scott um sean carlson was lamenting the fact that we hadn't seen each other for about eight years and we haven't which is a real shame because sean and i used to get on like a house on fire we were such good mates despite the fact we were playing characters who hated each other but we got on so well um and you know i feel yeah i miss i miss sean a lot we haven't seen each other for ages it's a real shame i'm gonna have to have a word with with uh, whoever's producing the next one they, they get us in the same room again because it's much more fun when we're together 